fellow artists. So to cut to the point, this video is going to be all about fine art printing, how I went about doing my first series of prints, fine art prints to be specific, how I went about finding a good company, looking at the types of paper, and then getting that shipped, preparing those prints for shipping, and then also how I sold a few copies. Check the link in the description if you are interested in one. But yeah, I went into all of this with kind of zero experience with printing. So it was a good learning process for me and the result has been exactly what I wanted. So stick around if you're interested in learning how to do your own fine art prints. What I began doing, which I would advise not to do, is just look up online companies and try and print stuff with random sites. Uh, I tried this at first and the quality was terrible and the price was extortionate. So I would definitely not advise this. If you are a fine artist in particular looking to get a series of say limited edition prints, I would check what kind of printing companies are local to your region and look into companies that are specifically, that have specific experience with fine art prints. I think this is important because before I was just looking at printing companies online, which I think is very different to uh, working with a team who are experienced with working with artists and fine art prints. As I have been following many artists and seeing their own kind of limited edition print releases, I've seen their promotion, I've seen the quality of the paper. I didn't know what the paper necessarily was, but I knew what kind of quality and finish I was looking for. The question was, what kind of paper was it? So I actually did a quick story to my Instagram asking those, hey, give me printing companies. Uh, are there any artists out there who have used any printing companies specifically in the UK? Because I'm based in the UK. I was recommended Art for Sight. I think their, <laughs> their website is a little bit, uh, let's just say old looking, um, but I have, I'm just going to preach about them this whole video because they have been such a fantastic company to work with. I don't think I could have bought higher quality prints from anyone else as in this is like top tier quality and their prices are also very, very affordable, especially if you are doing a series of prints. So you're going to have to forgive me here for slaughtering probably the pronunciation of certain types of paper and prints, but the type of print I knew I was interested in uh, in terms of the quality of the image and the color that was to be produced was, uh, it's a French word, it's a gicli print, I think is how you pronounce it. I looked it up on YouTube before doing this video and it was going to be printed on Hanamule paper, which is like a German word. I was just referring it personally myself as a Hanamunamunamunam paper. That's because uh, I can't, pronunciation is, uh, Basically, it's, it's a brand of paper which provide, they provide a series of different papers for fine art printing and also uh, photography and, and so on. They're very, very good. As I am an oil painter, I was looking at papers that were more appropriate for paintings. So I had, I basically narrowed it down to two choices, which was the photo rag paper, which I believe is very common because it gives, us, it gives off a very nice uh, white finish if you are having uh, borders. So there's a really nice contrast there. And also if you are using a lot of white in the image, it's gonna come out very bright. Um, but I narrowed it down to the photo rag paper and the bamboo paper. The bamboo paper for me is what I chose because it was a slightly, slightly off-white finish compared to the photo rag. Um, but it still had really nice contrast between the borders um, and it was more eco-friendly. So that was kind of a plus one. But I believe the bamboo also was slightly, the texture was ever so slightly subtly different. And I wanted that for my uh, Deception print, which is a limited series of 10 that I did. You can kind of, as I'm talking, I will put up the process and what I received and how I'm kind of uh, judging what I'm speaking about. But generally speaking, I would advise the photo rag paper for any artworks that maybe use more white or brighter colors, and then bamboo as it is off-white, it's not going to affect brighter colors so much. But even then, the, the difference is so minute that it's you can choose either one. Personally, for me, I would stick with the photo rag, as I said, for the brighter works, and bamboo 
for something that is uh, darker. So you can see the kind of promotion that I created for my print to put on my Instagram account to announce and sell the prints. Um, as I said, I did a, I believe it was a 2.5 centimeter white border around um, the image that I took. So what I did myself is I actually took raw photographs of my painting and then I prepared it in Photoshop. I think it was 300 DPI. It was a TIFF file type, but exported as like a JPEG. I kind of looked this up online because I wasn't used to kind of preparing the images for printing before, but this is very important to get a good quality print. You need to have a high quality image. If your print is going to be larger, which mine was, it was almost the original size of the painting, which was about 40 by 50 centimeters. So now I'm gonna go through how I then prepared the prints for shipping to customers and how I ended up choosing a company for the shipping. When my prints arrived, I actually had one of them come with a tiny mark on one of the papers where I would have been writing the name of the painting and signing, so it was in a bit of an annoying place. And this is where I preach about art foresight. All the links or things that I am talking about, I'm gonna put links in the description. Um, so check the description if you want to check out any of these things that I'm talking about. But Art Foresight, I have had a flawless experience with them. Um, I took a picture of the mark and I said, is there anything I can kind of put on top of it to cover it? I wasn't necessarily asking for a new print or a reprint. I just said, you know, it appears that a bit of the paper is a little bit damaged. Without even any questions, they just straight away just sent me a new print. Didn't charge me a penny for that new print. So go and buy loads of prints off of this company because they also i would also ask them so many questions on email about um how to prepare or shipping and so on and they would just answer i even asked them hey do you guys sell shipping materials for the prints and they said no unfortunately um, because i was trying to source uh, shipping materials like protective card and stuff but they did tell me that it would be best not to roll my print because there would be a chance that the surface, uh, the, the ink on the surface of the paper could potentially be a little bit damaged if I did roll it. So um, that's why I was preparing them to be shipped flat. So what I ended up doing is I actually had a big collection of like protective cardboard uh, boxes that I had stored or you could say hoarded um, over the past year from the art deliveries that I had for materials and so on. I ended up cutting those up uh, precisely for my prints, laying the print flat, wrapped in acid-free tissue paper to uh, protect the surface. And so I could also tape it down uh, on top of the card so it wouldn't bend or flap around inside of the box because you needed to leave a little bit of space. This was a very long process. So if you know you're gonna get some sales straight away, don't leave it to the last minute and just because I was literally cutting up boxes and preparing this stuff all day for about maybe seven or eight boxes to, to prepare because I had a, a couple of orders that didn't necessarily need all of the packaging, which was great, but it does, it does take a long time. I wouldn't just leave it to the last second. The packaging is one aspect I'd like to improve on. The, I could, you could say the finish of the box was not as attractive as I would like it to be as an artist. I think there's, there's something to be said about um, an unboxing experience when it comes to receiving an art or something that you would like people to maybe uh, appreciate. But for me at this stage, it was like, okay, this is the first time I'm doing it. I just really want to protect these, make sure they get to the customer without like holes in the box and like through the print um, as you can see the footage I had like fragile tape uh, put on top of it I had a lot of tape and uh, I just made it very secure yeah that was a great that was very smooth I will work on making my packaging more attractive that's what I'm trying to say as for selling I feel like this is a separate video I might do at some point about setting up your own site and how to sell works and so on having an online store it's, it's really not that difficult. There's millions of tutorials out there already. I might do it specifically for fine artists at some point, but I used Squarespace to set up my site, bought my domain from GoDaddy a long time ago, 
So that's all connected. Then you set up your online store on Squarespace. You just create some shipping options for different regions. You can then connect a PayPal account, a Stripe account. Stripe just allows basically people to pay with their credit or debit cards, I believe. Um, so you've got all these payment processes set up. It's easy, anyone can pay. Next is kind of the marketing. So I already had people interested in buying this print uh, through Instagram. So it was quite easy for me to get a few initial sales because I would just announce on Instagram and also DM'd everyone who showed interest when I announced that I was thinking of doing a print for this particular painting. But another alternative to Squarespace is Shopify. Um, there are, as I said, there are, there are loads of tutorials on, on YouTube for both Shopify and for Squarespace, and it doesn't have to be specific for artwork. It's literally like you just put your item, you list how many there are, you make sure that your shipping options are correct, done, payment system connected, and it's, it's just, you're good to go. So once the prints sold on my site, I actually did this uh, before, but I looked up shipping costs with different companies and I chose Parcel Force for my UK shipping because it was kind of connected to Royal Mail and they didn't have any weird rules about shipping art. There's actually strange rules about shipping artwork with some companies because I was looking into DPD because DPD were the ones that were delivering my uh, fine art prints. So I thought, okay, if they deliver fine art prints, then they should be able to ship my fine art prints. But then I don't know if there's certain avenues you can go through or if you just don't tell them that it's artwork and they'll ship it. But DPD have some weird rules about they don't want to ship artwork. So when I put in a print as what is shipping, they're like, no, we're not going to ship this. So I ended up choosing Parcel Force because I think they're connected to like Royal Mail. They're the ones that do the larger packages. I think mine was because it ended up being quite big. It, it was defined as like a larger package, but tracked signed delivery to make sure that it gets to the door to the right person. Um, and then, yeah, it was just, I hope no one comes with a spear and pierces the box and destroys the print. Um, and yeah, I've had, a, I've had customers receive their prints already and message me on Instagram with a thumbs up. So I'll be excited to kind of see what it looks like once they have that framed and on their wall. Just a quick note, as for international deliveries, I kind of got quotes from UPS um, for, for example, UK to America. And then I had all of that kind of shipping calculated and the costs calculated before, so I could put that as a shipping option on my site. So I think right now I've got UK, Canada, and USA as shipping options on my site. And I also made it clear for anyone who was interested, I was DMing, DMing people saying, if you're outside of, let's just say UK, Canada, or USA, just tell me and I'll add a shipping option for that because you kind of have to Squarespace is a bit weird. You have to do it like one by one unless you're on like a premium plan. So just make sure you're understanding whatever system you're using for your online store. It's uh, you're, you're aware of it basically. I hope I didn't say too many irrelevant things, but that was my experience for my first fine art print. As I said, there are still some prints available, so you can check out my site and see how it's actually working in the description below. I do take it down every now and again, depending on what I'm doing. So make sure you get the prints while they are still available on the store. Please do comment below if there is anything I missed. And I hope that this video was a useful guide for anyone who is thinking of doing fine art prints. Um, and I guess here is my uh, awkward goodbye. <laughs>